a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive part 15, fitting the recently modified brass pipe bush and bolting the smoke box to the saddle using new 4BA nuts, bolts and washers. Assembling the boiler expansion mountings, silver soldering the nut to the blast pipe, and finally fitting the smoke box door. There are quite a lot of things to do in this episode, but the good news is they are all easy jobs. The first thing I did was sit the smoke box on the saddle to make sure it fitted. I initially did this to just check that the bolts go through the saddle into the smoke box. The part that I worked on in the last episode I now need to fit to the smoke box. It's a threaded guide for the blast pipe and this is where it goes right underneath the smoke box. On the other end of this fitting inside the smoke box there's a silicone o-ring and the nut is not a tight fit and it was very easy and simple to fit this part in place. Almost in the centre of this image are a collection of 4BA nuts, bolts and washers. I'm really hoping that these bolts don't mess me about and line up perfectly between the saddle and the smoke box. The test fitting is initially not encouraging, but by using my scriber through one of the holes, I can align the holes on the saddle with the holes on the smoke box. All common sense really, a scriber is for scribing pieces of metal, but they're also very useful for doing jobs like this. After lining up the holes using the scriber, the bolt went through OK, and on the other end I fitted a washer and a nut. To check that there wasn't any twisting going on, I used the scriber to check the alignment of the other side, and that was fine too. Believe it or not, when you mark out and fit a smoke box to a smoke box saddle, it often does not fit quite as well as you would think. But thankfully this is OK. I fitted one bolt in each end and then I filled in the rest. And they all went in without any event. On each of them I fitted a washer and a nut. But I only fitted them loosely. I will tighten them all once everyone is in place. This view is of the other side and similarly all of the bolts fitted perfectly. I'm hoping that fitting the parts is going to be far easier than it was removing them, because all of these bolts originally, the old ones that is, not the new ones, were very tight. Once all the nuts and bolts were in place, it was time to tighten them. I used a nut spinner at one end, and I used a screwdriver as a tommy bar, but I only used the tommy bar on one side. It's essential not to over tighten these nuts and bolts, so using the nut spinner manually is about right. These are all going to be painted, both inside and out, so they're not going to work loose. The next part of the job is not painting, I'm moving on to assembling the expansion mountings that are made. The collars were fitted to long bolts when I painted them, now everything is disassembled. I'll put the long bolts from whence they came in my workshop. The first part of the job is to lubricate the metal. This is steam oil, it's very thick and gloopy, and it's a cross between oil and grease really. I want these fittings to slide easily in the slots. I tried to think this job through before I started it, and by using the threaded collar method, I can decide how tight I want the nuts and bolts to be up against the expansion joint. When I tightened the small Allen caphead bolts which will hold the boiler to the modified larger bolts will not change the amount of pressure that the collar and the bolt head put on the mounting bracket. Here I'm just checking for freedom of movement and it's going to be fine. Even though I forgot to remove the paint on one of these brackets before it dried, there's still a bit left but it should be okay. And here are the brackets ready to bolt back into the frames. Nothing more I can do to these, they are complete. If you watched the last episode where I bored out the nut to fit on the blast pipe, it's now time to silver solder the nut to the blast pipe. A viewer mentioned about he liked the idea of soldering the nut to the blast pipe, but I must stress it is not soft solder, it is silver solder. Temperatures inside the smoke box would melt soft solder, but not silver solder. The first thing to do is to clean up the piece of copper pipe. 
and then I'm going to silver solder the nut over the most damaged part by using a pipe wrench to fit and remove it in the past. And now I'm in the outer part of the workshop, changing the nozzle on the blowtorch. This is going to require quite a lot of heat. One very important thing not to forget at this stage is the flux. This is Easy Flow number two flux. And after a generous application of the flux, it's time for some heat. It took quite a while to get this part to the temperature to melt the silver solder. What I generally do is deposit a blob of silver solder on the work and when this dissolves into the part I can apply some more and the job's complete. Please be aware though that this is not a quick job. The video has been heavily edited and it's running at twice normal speed. After applying the solder I make sure it runs into the joint. I leave the heat on for a bit longer then I turn it off. I'm not going to quench this because it doesn't fit in my water pot. I'll let it cool naturally. In case you're wondering why it's smoking, this blast pipe was fitted to the engine and it's the remains of the oil inside the blast pipe, which is just smoking from the heat. I'm going to leave the blast pipe in the outer part of the workshop because it's colder out there and I need it to cool. So what I'm doing at the moment is cleaning up the pin that holds the smoke box door. The pin is fitted halfway into the chuck of my Myford lathe and I'm using some medium grade emery cloth just to clean it up and reduce its diameter slightly. After being very careful not to catch my hands in the chuck, I turned the part round and here I'm doing exactly the same to the other end. Once again this took a good bit longer than I'm showing in the video because I did have to remove some metal, the pin was too big to go through the hinge mountings. There's no point in having this pin too thick. When I removed it, it really took some doing. It took quite a while and quite a lot of pressure with a soft hammer to remove it. But now the fit is good. The hinge pin is not slack and not tight. In fact, it's just right. This is the locking assembly for the smoke box door. A steam locomotive smoke box needs to be completely airtight. This metal plate you can see behind the smoke box door is nothing to do with the air tightness. It's just a heat shield and it's not really necessary. I drilled out a couple of new washers because the old ones were quite badly marked. These images show how the thing operates. The shaft is squared so if you rotate this lever the part inside will move. The outer lever is just a lock to keep everything in place. Once again, I fitted it with a new washer. This next clip shows the principle. There is a crossbar inside the smoke box. Here it is. This is held loosely in place on two supports. As you close the smoke box door, you engage the locking mechanism with the crossbar. Then you turn the inner lever through 90 degrees and lock it in place with the outer one. Simple and very effective. I'll show you the principle from the other side. It's easier to see. I'm sure that there probably is a set angle for the position of the two locking handles. This one is set at 20 past 6, but I'm sure some experts are going to write in and tell me what it should really be. However you do it though, it's most important that the smoke box door is clamped very firmly to the smoke box itself. As a special bonus, here's another shot of the blast pipe cooling. Once it was cool enough to handle, I attached some silicone rubber tubing to it and lowered it into my acid bath. This should remove any oxidisation. And once it's nice and clean, I'll paint it black. And that is it for this episode. Simple jobs that took quite a long time to complete. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.